As I record this video, in a few weeks, I will be facing my first ever trial in my life in a criminal court case for sharing my Christian faith. And so join with me in prayer. Join with us here in Malta that God would use this situation to overturn things and to revoke this evil ban on so-called conversion therapy and that it would have a ripple effect across the nations so that righteousness would prevail again and we would hear a, a balanced view in society, a true view on human sexuality once again. Hello everyone, my name is Matthew Grech. I am 33 years old from Malta and for the last few years I had the privilege of working closely with Core Issues Trust and with the IFTCC. I am a worship leader, uh, I'm a serving as a deacon in my church, and I love music. So I write music, I sing, I play the piano, very musically involved. And uh, it's been a pleasure to also be associated with X Out Loud, which is a community of men and women who are leaving and have left LGBT. Hello, I'm Victor Moos and I'm 26. I'm a part of the X Out Loud leadership, which is a Quirishus Trust project and I've been working closely with Matthew for the last couple of years. I was approached by a local conservative media platform called PM News Malta, and I was asked to share my ex-gay testimony and to share my perspective on human sexuality um, because these journalists wanted to understand the subject a little bit more and they wanted to hear the other side of the story and to give that a platform and a voice in the context of a country that has banned so-called conversion therapy. So I accepted the offer. I was there, I was sharing my story, sharing the hope that I have in Jesus Christ, my biblical faith, and I answered questions about counseling and, and, and why that is relevant and whether people can change. So it was a very civilized, um, intellectual, scientific and spiritual discussion. So it happened that after the interview, I was called by the police, but I was sleeping uh, on a Sunday morning, so they couldn't get through to me. But they called a second time to say that they wanted to interrogate me in the police station. Um, and they told me that they were going to send a letter home um, by post. So I was expecting this letter. Um, it took me a little bit by surprise because this was seemingly not very different from previous interviews that I had done in Malta and I didn't think it would escalate to this point. So eventually I was thinking if my parents see this police letter what are they going to think? So I was very concerned uh, for the welfare of my parents of course um, but we received the letter and eventually I had to go to the police station where uh, I found out that three different people reported me to the police and were making allegations that not just myself, but also the journalists themselves, us three, that we were advertising conversion practices by simply um, relating my story and talking about ex-LGBT and counseling and help and support for such individuals. And there we were. We were told it could be that the police inspector would want to interview us as well. But that never happened. In, in the matter of a few days or a few weeks, um, the police decided to press charges against us. And we find ourselves now uh, facing a criminal court case uh, that can make us liable to a fine of 5,000 up to 5,000 euros or even imprisonment for five months. Matthew's case is a real concern for all of us within the community. Um, the fact that we have the same history, we share the same stories most of the times, uh, it puts us in uncomfortable situations and we feel, we may even feel in danger every time we share our story with someone. We might be accused of practicing some kind of conversion therapy while just sharing our life experiences. Isn't it unfair that in a world that encourages you to be whoever you want to be, to express yourself however you want to, we are being silenced for 
just sharing our life experiences and in their term, terms expressing who we are. For us, this situation is very concerning here in Malta. Um, we feel that we don't know what we can say anymore, what we can't say. Um, we definitely feel like this is a serious infringement upon our freedom to express our faith, the freedom to, to think differently, the freedom to live out our faith authentically and to celebrate it and to express it in the public sphere. So this is seriously concerning, uh, not just for ourselves, for our families, but also for all churches in Malta and in Europe. We feel that this has international relevance because there are many other countries that want to follow suit and have no idea about the attack that this is launching against churches all across the world. Science is an ongoing thing that gets to be refined in time. And if we are unable to challenge the facts that we have, the science that we have, how can then we affirm that we're living in a free society that advocates for the freedom of speech? Malta was the first country in the European Union to introduce a ban on so-called conversion therapy. So it is everyone's job listening to this video to raise awareness on the dangers of introducing such a ban because LGBT activists will use this ban to target churches, to target Christians and believers in all communities. Um, it's not just about what the law says in writing, it's about how it will be used and how it will be interpreted by activists to come against individuals. And so I'm very grateful for the lawyers that support me and have been uh, true friends uh, for me at this time. But what about other Christians? They need representation too. We need to fight against the introduction of such legislation all across the world because it's a serious assault against churches. Um, it's, a, it's an assault against the Word of God and the work of God. And we must take a stand and take this very seriously. At the end of the day, this case is so biased because they're contradicting themselves. And no matter what the outcome, we will continue to speak up about our stories, about our life experiences. We will continue to preach the gospel and to preach the Jesus that we have believed in.